what's up in the sky? Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Well, if you lived in the Connellsville area in the early 1900s, your answer very well may be a train. Hi, welcome to Around the Town with Marilyn Forbes. For today's show, we're gonna be learning a little bit about Connellsville's train history and a lot about the restoration of this great train depot right behind us here. So folks, please sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Well, folks, as promised, we are now here with John Malone, who is with Somerset Trust, and he's going to tell us all about the Union Station Depot, correct? correct? But before we get to that, we're going to talk just a little bit about the basic history of trains here in Connellsville. Yes, well, sir. thank you. Thank well, you for being with us well, on the show. thank you for having me. And anybody that is from the area knows that Connellsville and trains, they to go hand in hand. And, and there's something romantic about trains, and especially when it comes to this region, if you go back and look through the years, um, you know, I had two uncles that worked on the, the B&O, as okay. it was back in the day, uh, had several friends that their families worked for the P&LE, which this station belonged to. And, uh, you know, through the years, it was the major industry within Connellsville, if not Fayette County. And even at one time, a lot of people don't know this, there was a locomotive factory here in Connellsville oh, that made that. Baldwin locomotives here on the west side. Now exactly where, I'm not sure, but uh, uh, I think it's within walking distance of where we're sitting right that's, now. So. That's crazy. Well, there was over there was over a half dozen different rails that came through here, rail lines that came through here at one point, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm saying eight to ten okay. at one time, and some of them split off and became another railroad. Right. Uh, and where this this railroad in particular, the PNLE, uh, there were two branches that ended in McKeesport, and there's kind of like a Y if you go up the tracks and you come to McKeesport, and the, the I, I would say, the west side of the track went to Brownsville and the east side came down to Connellsville. And then eventually this track joined with Western Maryland, so it was a passenger depot where people could come from Maryland here or go to Pittsburgh. And uh, this was the central hub. hub for, <laughs> and, and we're sitting right now, it's our conference room here at the bank, but it was... Uh, the original ticket booth, so you can see oh, everything okay. was restored. Uh, and in fact, this room, is, it's, a, it's an odd shade of green, but it's pretty, mm -hmm. but it's the original color of this room. Uh, the architects came in and discovered it and decided to paint the room the original color of green. And this is the color it was back in 1911 when this building was built. Now, John and I were talking prior to us um, airing, and he's not sure how many different stations there were here in town. We know there was a lot. I, there I know there's probably five or six easily. Several. And, and I know of uh, three on the west side alone. Uh, there was one down uh, where Bradley Payne is, this station, and the one where Attorney Rowan has his office. Um, and that's pretty so, close in proximity, too, when right, you think about it. There were different it. railroads. Okay. Okay, I think the one down at uh, Bradley may have been the Pennsylvania. So, again, because there were so many railroads, and that was the major mode of transportation to get, right. especially the freight and the coal and coke. And the reason Connellsville was so important was because of their coke ovens, yep. the coal of the region, and Frick and Carnegie pay, played a very big role in the Connellsville region. It was kind of funny, uh, I'm on the board of the library, in 1899, um, many of the city, you know, leaders wrote a letter to Andrew Carnegie. And they wrote it, uh, I think it was April 19th, 1899, asking him if he would build a library. Oh, okay. And they, he said, Connellsville's important to me. I will build you a library. But cost wasn't an issue. He sent him a letter back. It was dated April 24th. So you... They mailed it the 19th, wow. they get a letter back, and he says, I will do it. That's how important Connellsville was to Carnegie and Frick with the coal and the coke and the steel. And the railroads played the big role in getting that, uh, getting that to Pittsburgh. Uh, and also, too, though, is people. I had absolutely no idea. Now, it makes sense when you think about it, mm -hmm. because automobiles didn't really come into to mode until like around World War II where they were that common. Right. But 
there were like dozens and dozens and dozens of trains every day that left here taking people all over because that was how you got there and that's how we got here. Uh, trains <laughs> and streetcars is how people got around. Well, Locally, when this, uh, I read this station, you know, the PNLA, they were basically short hauls, meaning that you might go to um, McKeesport. Right. Uh, but if you were going longer, they would put you on another, they put you on this train and you make a transfer and go somewhere else. But it was, uh, yeah, it, it was different back then. And I, I, I told you then, could you imagine Connellsville, you know, when this was built, 1910, in or 1911, in 1910, Connellsville had more millionaires per capita than any other town in the country. I mean, it was unbelievable. We had five movie theaters in town. You know, uh, it was it was it was a city it was, in itself. It, it was something. Uh, uh, there were several hotels in town. One was right across the street from this building, and now Spotos has it basically as a warehouse. But if, if you go inside and you go up to the second and third floors, you'll see the fireplaces, hmm. and the walls were torn out. Uh, but you could see where the rooms were, and it's really interesting to imagine what life would have been like, you know, a hundred plus years ago. Right. Uh, but I, I, I know I'm speaking for a lot of people. Thank, thanking you and your company for taking this gem and restoring it. I mean, this is absolutely great. And you want to take a little bit of a walk around now? We can show everybody what you folks did. We can do that. Okay, great. Okay. Stay with us. From here north, this was all open prior to us buying it. And this was the freight area. So it had a wooden floor. There were barn doors on the back. So when people would bring packages or their luggage, um, if you take a look at it, uh, I'll get it open here for you. <laughs> There's somebody in there. Uh, in order to restore the building, we made fake barn doors. Oh, those aren't real. Oh. Those are no, to the, they were at one time, but we we made them look real, oh. and we made this into offices because this was all open. And again, the paneling. If you take a look at the paneling, you can see a little better in my office. Uh, this was the original paneling in this area. And the banks, carpenters, made, found wood and made it look exactly yep, like that's amazing. Look at that. the original uh, the original paneling that was on there. And they they try to keep it as historically correct as you can. Um, and ordered to do this, they've consulted uh, with a historic architect who worked with the State Historic and Museum Commission to make this as historically correct as you can. Um, the colors of the floor were like a green and a gray, and uh, we put a carpet over some of this now just for acoustic reasons. Um, but they came in and they ground down the floor about an eighth of an inch repolished it, sealed it. Uh, they couldn't take it down anymore um, because one of the former owners used to actually bring cars in here and I was, change oil. I was just gonna ask you to bring that yeah. up. Yeah, so and there were big oil stains and everything They had oil here stains and, and we got all of those amazing. out by sanding it out. And, uh, and, and then- And the windows, they're all, all original? All original, they still have a wave in it because they're leaded glass. We have our heads in the window to let the other area know that we're here or not here, uh, just because if we're with a customer, sure. they don't. So, but if you look at, you can see the waves in the glass and uh, they kept that as historically correct uh, as, as possible. You, know, you can flip, the, flip it around, There's it's mine and, and Jessica. <laughs> so, so Everybody now, gets a I have kick to flip out them of back us. so they know they're here. Okay, yeah. there you go. <laughs> so, but this was the main gathering room. This was uh, here, okay. The, yeah, but actually most of the passengers would go there. Okay. When passengers would get on the trains, they would enter, there were steps on the outside, and there were two platforms, one on each side of the track, and depending on whether you were going south or north, would depend on which steps that you went out. Oh, For sense. those that were not able to navigate steps back in the day, there were freight elevators. And so they would take the freight elevators up. And, uh, and so one of the other things that we bought here, a uh, local resident who has a train museum in, in Greene County, his name's Eddie DeMuth, used to have the floral shop. 
Um, they used to have in every passenger depot a shoe shine stand, and people would get their shoe shines as they're going to the big cities or whatever. We found this on eBay, actually in Somerset. It was in a pool hall in Somerset, and <laughs> <In a pool. laughs> we decided to bring it back here, and uh, we're going to get it restored. We got the chairs from a, a local resident by the name of Paps Pickers out across from like Ranker Motors. Mm -hmm, he has mm -hmm. that antique shop. He found chairs that would have been historically correct. And, uh, and you said all the heating units do work? You, all, the you heating, them back? all the heating units are original. Okay. Um, the radiator company put them in, but they weren't functional in as much uh, when we bought them. A uh, gentleman from Scotto, who's a train enthusiast and a, a radiator enthusiast, his name's John Bialek. John took them all out, he sandblasted them, fixed all the cores, and got them functionally. And this is how we heat the main area of the bank oh, in the winter. There's a awesome. boiler in the basement, and it gets so hot at times we have to go down and we have to play with the thermostat, but it's very good heat. Um, that's amazing, huh? I mean, they, they say they, yeah. they don't make things the way they used to, and that's true. One of the things that I think <laughs> is kind of neat is you come in here, and this is all original, are the restrooms. If you come in, we set it up so the, the light will come on when you come in, but these are all the original doors, the original marble, the original terrazzo tile floor, um, and we did have to replace <laughs> The water closet oh, in here. Oh, this one? Oh, okay. Uh, just because the other one was old and okay. in disrepair. Uh, but we also have the original urinal <laughs> that everybody gets a kick out of. It has the tank at the top. Yeah, the and pool the chain. chain and everything. Yep, and goes all the way to the floor. You're going to have people coming in here just to use your restroom. Yes. They see it. <laughs> if you pull it, you can see it working. Oh, awesome. Everything's <laughs> functional. That's amazing. Now we have the original sinks. They've been reglazed, and uh, we're waiting on the plumbers to come down oh, and, wow. and to do that. But uh, uh, again, these fixtures were original. And as you, you could see back in the day, they didn't hide a lot of the pipes in the walls. They nah. just brought them straight down and uh, where they come from. But this is all original wood here, all original marble. Uh, everything's original. Now, if someone was coming in, and they were going to buy a ticket, they would come here and they would deal with whoever was selling the tickets back in the day. And they would buy them and get them and, you know, board the train from the outside. And go on their merry but, way. Yeah, it's, it's pretty neat. And then this was the main gathering room where people would wait for people to come in off the train or they would wait to get on a train because once again, they boarded the train from the outside of the building um, because the steps were out of the building. The only person that really would board the train or get to the train was the train master whose office was on the second floor of this building. So it was kind of neat. This is kind of neat too that they restored this the best they could. And they may do it a little better if they, they this is an old, the board of when the trains would come and end, the train numbers, the time that they would... And you can would, still uh, see them. That's so And cool. it's still there. So they would write it on here and people would say, oh, my, my train's not coming in till 5 a.m. or taking off at 5 a.m. so they could see. Is that original as well? That the is other original. One on the other side? Uh, okay. That is original as well. Uh, however, this was not a board. This was kind of added later. This was actually another window to the, oh, and okay. the, the bank did it to kind of match the two up. Oh, I see. Okay. Because this window was really never used that much because that was the main window to buy the, uh, yeah. The lights are original. The um, lights are original. I don't know if we can get some of these to come on uh, over here, but uh, they were all rewired uh, to make it, see if we can get them all on here. Here you we can go. see them. Uh, everything's functioning. Prior to us buying it, uh, we had, uh, the people that owned it had air conditioning put in, so those little holes on the roof oh, is that what that are is? air okay. conditioning, and uh, there's smoke alarms and internet and everything to make it, uh, uh, to make it uh, functional today. We have a lot of cameras on both sides of these buildings in case someone would come in at night, we would get alar you know, alarms. 
We have cameras all on the outside of the building. Uh, yeah, there were two more restrooms. Oh, in yeah, here. I'm sorry. One is this one we use kind of for like paper storage. And there was another one. Um, as you go in, you can see it comes on. And it's been restored. Uh, the reason we have the paper in here is I don't want to go down in the basement every time I need a ream of paper. Oh, well, true. You know, and so. And then another restroom, and then yeah. the ladies' resting room. Yeah, this was the men's <laughs> room, and this then was the ladies' room. Uh, so if you look at the ladies' room, it's kind of been, they're in the process of doing something with it uh, in the event that if someone wanted to come and maybe ask the bank, hey, I'd like to put a coffee shop or I'd like to do something, we're pretty close to being ready to getting that done. But uh, we wanted to maintain the integrity of the building, and so that's what, where we've come to at this point. Um, well, being that it is on the uh, National Historic Registry, you have to stay within you do. their perimeters, but correct? Th that, you do, so much. but that kind of is more so on the outside of the oh, building than oh, inside. Okay. You can make changes, but our bank being historically sensitive to that, they want to make it as historically accurate as it can for today's okay. day. All right. And I think I told you earlier, our bank has four National Historic Buildings. I think that's just of, amazing. I think that's just it, awesome. It, probably our most magnificent is our, uh, we have a dome building in Somerset where the Somerset Trust Company started. It has an ornate dome in the conference room upstairs that uh, conference room is probably almost as big as this whole downstairs. Oh, wow. it, it's just beautiful. And uh, I just I, I think that's amazing that your company does that, that they're willing to, to help preserve this history. I mean, it's wonderful. Well, Somerset Trust is older than this building. It's 1889. Oh. And uh, it's the same family that's run it. We're now in the sixth generation. So they are really, really into history. They like to be what we call a community bank. And if you look up the definition, it's people that are in the community do things for the community. And one of the things when they came here, they had their eye on this building just because they thought if we could renovate that, that'll show the community we're serious about being part of Connellsville. And Connellsville has responded in a wonderful way, whereas we are now out of 45 Somerset Trust branches, we're number two behind the headquarters. Oh, that's great. That's how quick people have come to us. And it's been, uh, it's, it's been a great, great ride for us here. Wonderful. Uh, for eight years. And now we're not done with the building. We nope, have we're not two done. more floors, actually. You ready? Yep, I'm okay, ready. We're Let's gonna, go. We're going to venture upstairs. Stay with us. Okay, where am I? See, look, I'm lost already. <laughs> As John said, the outside they, is beautiful. Uh, yep. The woodwork that's still outside. There, there's uh, a company by the name of Wilson and Sons okay. from Connellsville that this was a pet project for Mark Wilson. He, he did everything that he could to make the painting correct, the staining correct. And you the said outside oh. of the building, if you look, it looks like it's wood and it's stained. Actually, he did research and found out that it was just, it, it was black when, when oh, really? he took it over. He sanded it down, got the original color of the wood, and then uh, he put linseed oil, because that's what they did back in the okay. day. So it's not stained. It's oil. So okay. then up here was originally the train master's office. And it was pretty neat. We here. can go back in here. Go down about six steps. Okay. And he had a big desk in here. And he would come and he would get the mail work on whatever employees he needed to work on and take it up to the next level and put the mail on the train. But the train master had his office here. This was his place. And then later on, Mr. Triggs that had the glass company, this was his office. Oh, okay. And there again too, um, you said all, uh, there was a lot of pain taken to make sure all the colors are the same as far right. as the walls. I think that's crazy how you no. can actually find out. We're currently, you know? use, uh, we're currently utilizing it as a call center. So someone calls and asks about their loan or their checking account. There'll be people That's where here they go. that we took it on, upon ourselves to add some more jobs to the community. Okay. Roof is... 
The roof terracotta? is all, all terracotta. It's a green color. It was originally green. It was made by a company in Ohio that still makes terracotta tile today. And it was installed by a company in the Mon Valley that put it up originally. And then when we restored it, we took the broken ones down and they took the whole roof, redid it. Same company, 100 years later. Crazy. Redoes the roof. Boy, I'll tell you what, heat does rise, doesn't it? Yep. <laughs> Very warm up here. Okay, so you know what John and I did not talk about was the one time elevated rail line that was through here. Correct. Um, and John, you want to tell us all about yeah, that? Where we stand right now, um, the, you would walk out this door, the train master would walk out that door, there was a platform. To our left and south was the Western Maryland Railroad, and to the right was the Pittsburgh and Lake Erie Railroad. So this was kind of where they two met up. And this passenger depot served both, both railroads, but mainly it was the P&LE that built it. Uh, if you look across the street, the tracks were elevated across where a lot of people may remember it called Whitey's or Nick's Cut Rate. Over top of that, there were cement uh, embutments that would go the whole way uh, up along uh, 7th Street and the trains would eventually go back to the ground. But going south is where the, you know, the, this train would take you back into the ground and take you, that would be the Western Maryland. On the other side, where the Valley Dairy and Tom and Jerry's, it crossed Route 119, and you can see possibly the caboose uh, on the other side. That connected to the bridge that goes over the Yawk, and that was the PLE. Uh, but the trains were above everything here. And mainly it was because during the day they didn't want to disrupt traffic all the time uh, with this. There was already, like you said, possibly seven or eight different railroads in town. And I can remember as a kid going through town, you're always driving over railroad tracks, <laughs> whether it be on 119 through town. And uh, again, there was probably five or six train stations in town as well. And I think it's cool how you guys sort of simulated a little bit where the railroad tracks may have been. Yes, they, they did that with the lighting idea. in front of the bank. A lot of people don't know that, but they put in a little lighting system and they spaced them uh, the same space of what a, a train track would be. And they put n names of some of the railroads that were in Connellsville. Uh, uh, I think Bailey Machine from Connellsville made those. Oh. And, uh, you can see in the, in the background over there is another train station uh, that attorney Rowan uses now. Um, and he just fixed that up maybe about, what, 15 years ago or right. so? And we chose this one because of the fact that it was brick. Okay. We thought that this station had uh, much better bones than just an old wood station. Uh, this right here in itself is so, what a great view. I've, huh? I've come here and watched fireworks. When oh oh my goodness, city. what a great idea. Yeah, so we, we've done that. And uh, you know, this when they get it wonderful. fixed up, we'll probably have a little party up here that we can watch <laughs> fireworks. Well, I know we were talking a little bit before we, we finish up here, but we were talking a little bit earlier about maybe this building being utilized for some community functions down the road yeah, whenever you yeah, folks are ready. We used it several times already. We've had Christmas in here. Uh, where we had Santa, Santa Claus. Santa, yes, I, mean, I, I covered that, yeah. yeah we had um, um, many different things. Every year the bank has a car show and we open it up so people can come in and use the restrooms and come in and see the building. Uh, we just had it about two weeks ago. We had 257 cars here. Um, but we like to do community events and any organization, as long as it's you know fits into what the bank profile would be, if they want to use it, we, we let them use it for whatever, um, you know, anybody that, if it's community minded, will be part of it. And now, do you ever just have like an open house so people can come and just see the restoration that you folks have when done? We, when we first, we came here, when we bought it, it was not restored. We had an open house and people come through and say, oh, this is great, this, this <laughs> you know. And so what happened was when they built the bank adjacent to us, this place, um, needed to be utilized because we, we got so busy so fast, we, I shouldn't say outgrew the bank, but we needed more office space. So that's when they decided 
they had it on the plans, yeah, we're going to restore this, but they did it much quicker than A little than quicker thought. than they, okay. And they did it with, <laughs> with the State Historic and Museum Commission and a historic architect, um, and they did it in conjunction and got historic tax credits because the bank, the bank put a boatload of money into this to make mm. it to where it is today uh, because you just can't do it uh, and, and, you know, you just can't do it and make it to where it looks right and it's historically correct. You try to please everybody, but, but it's difficult. So be before we finish up, we're going to see a little bit of the outside. Okay. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Stay with us. As you can see, the, the architect tried to make these uh, seem like they were train tracks coming through here. And on the sides, they put the name of Western Maryland, which was here south. Uh, not sure which one this is. This one doesn't even have anything on it. This one is the Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh McKee Sport and Yachtagany. And that's where they split off. And then they were acquired by the PNLE. And they split off in McKee Sport. And it goes to Brownsville and to here. So it was kind of neat. So did you so, do all the painting? Did you paint the, the windows and everything as well? They, uh, and yeah, Mark Wilson from Connellsville, Wilson and Son, like I said earlier, he did all of that. Oh, that's what you were talking about. That was, okay. He did all the window and then he did the outside, the eaves and all the trusses that hold that up. Uh, they found out that they weren't painted, but they were actually, um, they were black when we took it over from the coke and the coal dust and you know, from the coke oven. So he sanded them by hand. <laughs> and then they put linseed oil to get it to ah. its original look. Uh, but he did research and they came up with it and uh, it turned out to be very nice. One other interesting tidbit about this, if you take a look at our lot, it is a brick. And when we took it over, there was many bricks missing uh, and we, had, we did not have enough bricks to finish it off. So what our bank did was they went to the people in Connellsville and found a, a brick alley that was there and said it was all heaved up. How about if we take those bricks and we'll pave the alley for you oh, and make and it nice if brick. you give us the bricks. <laughs> and that's where these bricks came oh from. Oh my gosh. It actually came from the south side. And uh, so this they wanted amazing. to keep it as original, like I said. Sure. And they got very creative with the, with the brick. <laughs> And so, well, thank you. This has been absolutely wonderful. I'm sure that they put Connellsville like it would have been a train yep. station back whenever. And uh, National Historic Register. Um, not sure exactly when it was on, but I would assume there was a number of buildings in Connellsville that got put on late 70s, early 80s. Okay. So I would assume that's when, when With this. With all the other happened. ones. Well, again, thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much for being thank with you. us. Um, and Anytime. If, if anybody wants to come and get a tour, they can get just, in touch with you. Just come ring the doorbell. Okay. Our heads <laughs> in the window. We'll let them in and give them a tour. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed the show. I know I did. And before I forget, a big thank you to Dan Cox over at the canteen for use of this vintage. It's an actual vintage conductor hat. Pretty snazzy. And behind me here, this is the last remnant from the elevated rail system that would stop in the tower that we were shown. I think it's really nice that there's at least this one piece left here that can give us a little bit of a visual of what used to be, because this used to be a massive hub of train activity right here in Connellsville. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed the show. And remember, keep smiling, keep dreaming, and keep watching. <laughs>